Okay, hey everybody, it's Peggy. I'm back again with another video, and today we are making that. We are making a cup sleeve. So, just to bring everybody up to speed on what my adventure of the day has been, my wife asked me to make her a cup, uh, a cup sleeve, a coffee cup sleeve. And we know what coffee cup that is. <laughs> okay, so this is a pretty simple thing. Now, the first one I made was I went online and I found a cup sleeve design and I thought that sounded really cool and I made it and I hated every minute of making it I just couldn't not and I found out that one size does not fit all at all so I am going to tell you what I am doing to make this cup sleeve to make a sleeve that is compatible with that cup which is that sleeve and I'm and we're gonna go over this and make one together Right, it goes on just like a regular, it just goes on like a regular cup sleeve. Um, it fits that, it fits that. Okay. So this is a tall, this is a grande, because God forbid they use small, medium, and large. Um, I will say, though, that what we discovered was on this size, this one actually fits fairly well on this one. It's a little loose at the top still, but... So I have no idea what this was actually sized for. I have no idea what this was supposed to be for because what you'll do is you'll go online and you'll look up cup sleeve and then you just start finding, you know, look up tutorials and ideas. And I wanted to start with something I've never made one before. And you can tell, like, I mean, I had some problems. I had some problems doing this particular design. Um, and I've and there's a lot of this design out there where it's just weird. And obviously if I do enough of these, get enough practice and I have this weird pleat here that I don't know how to get out. Anything that you're doing for the first time, you're probably going to have issues like that. Like where that didn't, that's not, the black is showing through. You're going to have issues like that. That's normal. There's nothing wrong with that. My issue with this, I had two issues with this. One, obviously it's the wrong size. And my particular sewing machine, um, I don't really have a narrow foot that I can use on it. It's, uh, this is, most sewing machines are, most sewing machines are a little narrower than this, than this one here. So I had a really hard time getting the, um, at one point you have to come at, on the, on this design here, on this design here, at one point you have, uh, you have to come in and stitch here and you have to do it from the front and the back. And the reality is, is that on that machine, I was already having a hard time. So if I make the design even smaller, it's going to be even more difficult to sew this. So I just decided to give up on that idea. So what I remembered, I remembered some other shit and shenanigans that I can get up to. And I decided to do that one. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two pieces of fabric. Actually, do I want both to be red? No, I want something else. I'm literally just digging around over here. Okay, I've got, I've got more of this left. I've got some more of this left and I've got this left. So I'm going to take two pieces of fabric, just whatever scrap I have laying around. And that's going to be my, this is, re this is actually fully reversible. You just flip it. Okay. So it's reversible. This one I liked infinitely better. The other one, the other one doesn't have a, an exterior seam, but I don't care. Okay. So for this one, take two pieces of fabric. Make sure that this is big enough to do it. If your fabric has a pattern, this side this side has a pattern, right? So I'm going to come over here. I'm not, I'm not, I'm just rough trimming right now because I find that when I'm trying to get stuff done with big pieces of fabric, I usually find some spectacular way to fuck it up because I'll be trying to sew, leaving this hanging off the back and then everything's shifting. Okay, so this one, does, this side does have like lines. So I'm just going to cut this. I'm going to put, I'm going to do this one. So that goes like that. This doesn't have any lines at all. So I don't have to care. So we're going to go like that. We're done. I am going to just run this over to the um, iron right quick. For just, I'm just going to give it a quick, actually I'll be over at the iron in a second anyway. Okay. So that sits there and we're fine. Now I'm going to take this over here. Now this is a great template. That's what I did last time. Okay. Okay. So what I did with this is I got along the back seam 
and I just carefully tore it. I just carefully separated it. And I will say that we obviously got a coffee while we were out. Um, I put one on my coffee and it warmed up the glue a little and made it a lot easier to take it off. <laughs> just so you know, just in case that matters to you. Okay, so I'm just going to do that. I'm going to get my pins out. So this is going to make a great template. doesn't matter whether I use it upside right or upside down. So put it in whatever spot makes sense to you. Okay. Poke it all the way through. Straighten it back out again. <laughs> all that matters at this point, it can be off a little bit. Life will go on. So that's fine. I'm just po putting it in place. So when you are working with pins, when you are working with pins, just don't, no sudden movements. And then if you touch the pin, you won't like it, but you won't, it won't hurt. You won't, you won't get hurt. Just take your time and go. And I'm, I'm going, I'm, I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure here. So it doesn't look as bad as it seems. Okay. So now I'm just going to go around now. I'm going to back up though. See this part here, this, end, the one end is tapered. Okay. And the other end is flat. You want to cut the taper. So this end here was a little tapered. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to do a little taper on that side. Then I'm going to cut straight down. Then I'm going to come on this side. This side I have to eyeball it because it kind of cuts, it kind of does this weird thing, but I'm going to taper that one too. Okay. This matters because cutting that taper matters because this whole section here, almost half an inch here is what was glued to here. Okay, and that is going to be very, very useful. That's going to be a very useful thing. I'm just going to show you as I go, because it makes it the easiest for me. So, I'm going to use a smaller pair of scissors because it's just easier for me to get in here. So, interfacing, you can cut with almost any kind of scissors that matter, that, that, that catches your eye, because you can even use paper scissors for this, but paper or fabric scissors, and it's fine. Okay, so I am just cutting as close as I can to the cardboard without cutting the cardboard. If you are comfortable and if you are comfortable and confident, you can just take your rotary cutter and go along the cardboard. But I find that I always end up end up slipping and and cutting the cardboard. Doesn't matter if I cut the cardboard, but if I'm careful, if I'm careful, I'm I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I'm only making a couple of these. And I'm pretty sure I'm not making any more of these. But if I decide, if for some reason I decide I'd like them and want to make more, then obviously the less damp, the the longer I can preserve this piece of cardboard, the longer I have a really useful, accurate template. Never, you just come back and if something seems a little off, just trim it up. Okay, so that's that. That's that. This is done. Don't worry, I've got a garbage pail down here. <laughs> My poor dog is sitting over there panting at me because she wants me to... I don't know what she wants. Okay, that part's easy. Now we just come over here. So I'm going to take this whole works over to the ironing ironing board. And the way I've got everything set up, I don't... I'm not going to bring you guys with me. Okay, it's only going to take a... It's only going to take a few seconds anyway. So when you are working with, um, with, with um, iron-on interfacing, then... You want to find. You want to figure out which side has the um, has has the glue on it, and if you can't see it or feel it, then what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to just hold it up to some light. And this side, I don't know if I don't know if the camera's picking it up or not. I won't I won't know until I come back and and check it in the edit. This side has nothing. Nothing is shiny. Okay, this side has got a little little, little tiny bits of shiny, little shiny dots. I don't know if that's going to show. I think I'm too close now. Little shiny dots. That's the glue. The dot, the shiny, the shiny side, the little shiny, the little teeny tiny shiny bits. That is the glue. So I'm going to be going over. I can still see the straight lines on this piece. So I'm just going to go like that. Line it up somewhat straightish and I'm going to iron it on. And you can already see from here that one side is straight and one side is tapered. That side's going up nice and straight. That side's tapering in. That's, you want that. Make sure that you have that on your piece. So I'm going to be right back.
Okay, so I'm back. So again, can I do that straight across? No. So I'm just gonna line this up. I have, I'm, I'm, I am just particular. I have found that if I, a lot of times when you see instructions for stuff like this, they're gonna tell you to cut it to the proper shape and blah, blah, blah. And I find that it's always better to sew first then trim. So I'm just gonna come around here I'm just taking off any really obvious excess so that I'm not fighting with it or just so that it's a lot easier for me to manage. And that's going to sit back there. There's actually enough there to make one more. So at least one more. Yeah, one more. So if we really like how this turns out, I can make more. Okay. So I'm going to throw a couple pins in. To hold. Well, not that pin. What's wrong with that pin? Oh, maybe it's this thing. Okay. I'm going to take out a couple of pins. And again, don't let the don't get scared of using pins. Um, just remember that once your pin is in to just move normally, but just don't use a lot of pressure. Don't just don't just grab things, just grab things. Okay. I've got a big mess here because I've been I whenever I'm doing whenever I'm doing something new, I always manage to make a big honking mess, okay? Okay, so now this is pretty simple. We are gonna start at, whichever end makes sense to you, I'm gonna start out a little way from the end. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna eyeball, okay, I'm gonna eyeball it. What do I have here? I have something to point with, okay. I'm gonna all eyeball it and start about a quarter to a half inch off from the end and then come in and catch right along that edge. I'm not sewing into the interfacing. I'm going to sew right beside it. This will just, you don't have to, you don't have to sew off the edge like this, but it will help. And if you don't, if you're not confident, just take a, um, take, take your friction marker and just make a little, a little, just a little line. Okay. Now, these taper in, easy enough. We're gonna get to the end. Now, funny thing is, is at this end, at the tapered end, you don't have to care if it's, you don't, a little, little short back stitch, you don't have to care if it goes a little bit past. I mean, it's not gonna, it's not gonna wreck your day if you don't do this part, it'll just make it a little tiny bit easier. So you just back up, come in from about a little more than half, a little more than a quarter inch. Again, I'm just sewing right along that edge. Doesn't have to be perfect. If you kind of end up a little bit in or a little bit out, life will go on. This one here, this one here um, is just coming up just the tiniest bit. It's not going to hurt anything. Okay. Turn that little mini corner to get to your taper. That's a little bit of a taper. Back it up. Done. Done. Back over here again. Do 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 do. Oh, the lighting is a little bit better. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna start by just going right. I don't have to go exactly on the bottom of this taper, but I'm going to get, I don't care, I don't care about my seam allowance on this side. If I cut, if I cut, if I cut right to here, that's fine. Now I'm just, I'm just, I, I'm just eyeballing approximately, there's my stitches. So I'm going to eyeball and trim approximately a quarter inch out from my stitches. If you're not comfortable, make it a little bit wider. Try not to get any closer than a quarter inch. Quarter inches. What's a quarter inch? What do we know? What do we what do we have handy that's about a quarter inch? I don't know. Let me see. Well, there you go. Half the half the width of your pinky nail, of your of your pinky fingernail. That's about right. That goes off the end there. Okay. So just eyeball, just eyeball it, eyeball it, eyeball it. Okay. Coming across the bottom here, those two little lines that you made. Just cut straight across. You do not have to um, trim your corner here. That's not going to matter. 
Well, maybe it will matter to you. If it matters to you, you can trim your corner a little. If, you, if it matters to you, you can trim your trim that little bit of bulk, but I, it didn't matter on the first one. It shouldn't matter on this one. No, it won't matter. Don't trim it. Don't trim it. Don't touch it. Okay, so all the way around. This has already been sewn down, so I could have already taken my pins out by now. So just trim. Once you get to that little corner, go a little, just, just go in for your little taper there. Or not, it's up to you. I, I'm not thinking that it's going to affect anything. Okay, do to do, do to do. Now, we are going to flip this inside out. I would recommend that you start from the wide end. That tapered end is a little bit narrow. This, ta this end here where the taper is is a little bit narrower, so it's always easier to flip these from the widest possible end. Okay, so we're going to flip it. We're going to flip this. We're going to flip this bitch. Okay. Oh, and uh, somebody, le somebody left a comment on one of my videos recently asking about the book sleeves that my wife made. And I mentioned it earlier today, and I've already meant earlier today, today being, what day is today? Today is Tuesday? I don't know what day it is. Anyway, so I don't know when you're going to be seeing this, but she has already agreed to come on camera with me and make, make one. She did, a, she did that project all by herself. I helped with, a, I helped with some stuff with, for her, but she did all the work. She found the pattern, picked her fabric. She did, she did almost all of it. I only had to help her with a couple of tiny things. She's getting really good at sewing lately. Okay, so now that I've flipped it, I'm just coming along here and just, I'm just gonna do a quick, uh, I'm gonna do a quick finger press. I uh, grab a little gadget. If your hands ever get sore, this is, I think this is a leather, I think this is, I think they use this in leather working for making a seam, but these are, these are really popular as seam rollers in quilting. And if you ever have an issue with your hands getting tired or a touch of arthritis or whatever, then these can really help. Especially if you're quilting or something where you're going to be doing this. I'm doing one and then I'm stopping, right? If I was, you know, if I were, if I were sitting here getting some quilting and stuff done and really, really had a bunch of this stuff to, to organ to arrange, I'd be really wanting to have that out. I just thought I'd get it out to show you guys. There we go. Okay. Now, I am going to wander off to the ironing board and give this one quick zap of some steam just so that it's nice and flat to work with. I don't mind that there's going to be a seam, but I don't want. To, I want it to be as. I want it to be as nice as possible. Now I've got two choices. I can leave it, or I can come along and do a quick stitch across top, top and bottom. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that because when I did all of this, I did not sew. I did not sew along the edges of the um, interfacing, which means that if the interfacing ever shifts, it, it could bunch up. So we don't want it to do that. Interfacing, once it, once an interfacing has been glued down, you can still rip it back up. The main purpose behind the interfacing... Oh no, I gotta do that at the end. I gotta do this at the end. I was about to screw up. Okay. This is really simple, guys. This next part's really simple. You take your tapered end. Okay, you take your take your wide end. The reason why, the reason why I sewed out a little bit is so that there's already some stuff sewed down, so that when I do this, it'll it'll just be easier. So just fold that down. Here, I'm just gonna come over here. I'm sitting at a bad angle with it, and okay. So you just fold that in, and you can you can tell where to stop folding because you can feel the. There it is. Ah, let me get that opened up. You can feel the interfacing, so you can feel when to stop folding, right? So just fold, and this is the wide end that I'm folding down. So just fold it down. Okay. Get your corners. Corners can be tedious, but that's okay. Just take your time. Okay, get that side. I, I flip it, that's just how I do it. Whatever works for you to get both sides folded down evenly. 
like I said, just take your time. It'll go. It'll it will go. It's just it's just fiddling and farting. Fiddle and fart until it gets where you want it to be. And if something isn't quite cooperating, get in there with your tweezers. This is why this is this is why I like good tweezers. Not just whatever cheap pair of tweezers that comes with your little sewing kits and whatever, whatever. Okay. You're going to take your time. Now, if you are really determined to have a perfect seam here, then run it back over to the iron and give it another quick zap, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, once you give it a seam, once you give it a press, it's not going to go anywhere. I've got one more thing to do before I can sew this, and that is take it, bring it around. See that taper? Don't do anything with this. Just leave it raw. It's fine. You don't have to do anything with it. Slip it inside this other end that you've already prepared and just tuck it in. Tuck it in until it's snug. Until it... Tuck it in. That part's done. Okay, now where's my pins? I need... There's my pins. Okay, now which end did I put in last time? Okay. So you can either put a you can put you can put several pins in going this way. I think I'm gonna do that that way. Push all the way through, and then just do that. That part's good to go. Bring it back over here. Ah, oh, the vertigo! Oh my God, the vertigo! Okay. Now I'm doing this with black thread because. This one's probably going to be mine. That other one looked really nice. I think Lisa's going to... Unless Lisa has a huge issue with the uh, with the fabric I used, then I'm pretty sure that one's going to be hers. So, double check it. Take a quick look. So, I did this... I, the, the one that I did earlier, I found that if I put the fat end in first... Put the fat end in. So, what I did was I... What I did was I lifted... I didn't do that. I lifted that. Okay. Lift the foot up. I just put that down to help hold it in place. And I just folded that back. I just I just grabbed this whole piece and just crunched it right up. It doesn't matter if you've already ironed it. You're, you, you're, you're ironing it so that you can get through certain things. So let me see. Back stitch. And yes, my pins are on the bottom where they're difficult to see, but that's kind of the cost of doing business for this one. Okay, so just grab it. And I'm just sewing, I'm just sewing right along, right along that edge that I put in where the two pieces are, where the, where the ed, two ends are connecting. I can't even say two pieces. And then I'm going straight across. Whoops. Let's see if I can get my hand out of the way a little bit. So I just literally just pulled this out of the way. Back stitch a little bit. Okay, that part's done. Okay, let's see if I can do this right because I didn't do that on the other one and I may have to go back and do it anyway. Oh, I screwed up. Look at that, I missed, I missed, it missed on that side. This whole section didn't, 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 didn't sew down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it. I'm gonna flip it. I'm gonna put it right back in again on this side. I just checked. I just checked the red. The red is sewn down. It's the blue just pulled away a little bit. And I would rather. I would rather have a functional item than have a perfect item. Well, that's what happened. It must have tiny, tiny, tiny bit of nesting happened. It may have just uh, let the one piece tug itself off to the side a little bit. No big deal. So we're just gonna trim that up. Get that out of there. Okay. So I am just gonna put that right back in again. Okay, now on this side, I've had the, I've encountered this before, and I've shown you guys how to deal with this before. This is um, this is going uphill. The, the 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 foot is trying to go in an uphill thing. There's a couple of ways to deal with it. You can you can take a piece of fabric and put it behind and force the foot to be more level, and it'll go. Or you can just go up, tiny bit forward, down, up, tiny bit forward, down. Honestly, 
it depends on your personal comfort level as to what is going to work best for you. I just do the I just do the up down because I just personally find it faster. But yeah, that works because it just pops out. It just pops out when the foot's back to level again. Okay, so again, I just pulled I just I just pulled this whole mess forward to get it out of the way, and I'm just stitching it. Now I may, let's take a look, let's take a, let's take a look. Okay, so I repaired it. Is it a super ugly repair? Well, it's kind of ugly. I don't have to use this as the outside though. So let's see what's going on. And like I said, personal project, I'm not selling it. So if something goes wrong, I don't have to care. So what I can do, if I decide this really matters to me, then I just simply come back with thread with with my um, I come back I come back with my uh, seam ripper, take out the inside area there, and then it's fine. But I'm just gonna leave it because I don't care. I don't need to care. It's just for personal use. This is this is kind of this is kind of an avoidable problem. I just didn't realize I was making. It's kind of an avoidable pro an avoidable problem if you double check before. I'm over, I'm over here off the camera. This is kind of an avoidable problem if you double check and I just didn't do that. So that was my own, that was my bad. Now, the last step that you can do, can, I might as well do it because I've already done it. Okay, so the last step is I'm going to just take this. I'm going to get under here. I'm just going to go all the way around near the edge just to, just to finish it and make it look a little nicer. I'm not going to backstitch because I don't need to. Once I finish my, because I'm going to, I'm starting here and I'm going to end up right back at the, I'm going to end up right back where I started. So once I'm back where I started, I'll just, I'll just sew over top of the uh, finished. I'll just sew over top of that edge, that stitch line, where the thread is. I'll sew there. I'll put a sewing, I'll put a sewing there. I don't know what I'm going to do. Okay. It's an effect that a lot of people like. So if you like that effect, just don't be afraid to just, because don't forget I ironed this down too. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go grab the other one and do that too, because one, this does have a bit of an added benefit is because if this ever gets dirty, I'm going to want to wash it. So if I have to, if I have to, if, okay, if I have to wash this one, this can pull, ah, the black, everything, everything can pull apart and then puff up as if, like the way it looked before I ironed it, like that. It can end up looking like that after being washed as well. So with that in mind, I am going to sew both of these down because then I can just wash them and use them without having any special care. So I am going to finish them like this. Do that. Do that part. And I don't need to backstitch. Do, 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 do. I'm not always happy with the way, sometimes when you're sewing this stuff, sometimes when you're sewing this stuff, you get little clusters of the uh, thread ends that you've had to cut off. And that can look, because it just, because I've, I've started, I've started, well, and not a bugger. So I'm just doing the edging. I'm not sure how much got missed. So I'll just recap. I'm just doing the edging now. I'm putting a, I'm putting a step, line of stitching along the top and along the bottom. I thought I was doing much better for time, so I didn't wasn't checking my time. Camera shut itself off. I gotta get a camera that doesn't care as much about its own self-preservation. It turns off so that it doesn't, you know, it'll keep it from you'll keep it from overheating or whatever. And it's like, dude, I'm just gonna turn it off and right back on again. What the hell are you doing? Anyway. Anyway, 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 we're almost done. We're, we're done. Okay. Now, time to... Oh, no, I'm not done. So I was going to do Lisa's. Well, I don't know which one Lisa's going to want, but i got to do these down because if I ever wash them... If I ever wash them... Come on, keep going. If you ever decide to wash something like this and it hasn't been edged 
on both sides, then it'll just puff. It'll it'll get really puffy and have to be ironed every time. And I'm not. I, there's no fucking way I'm ironing this thing. So it's just a layer of stitching holds everything in place so that no matter what you do to it, you don't have to worry about the. You don't have to worry about it puffing itself back up like it did before I before I gave it its first ironing. This will just this just sets it in place forever now. Don't worry, everything's fine. The uh, the the seam that that seam that I put in is right there, so it's just making a little bit of noise as it goes over the seam. That's very normal and to be expected. Don't let it worry you. And then this is the inside one. And again, you just put it down like that, shove the whole thing over. Don't be afraid to get a lot, little bit of, you can be a little rough with it, it's not going anywhere. And as always, the reminder that just because you can go, just because you can do it, however many, just no matter how fast your machine can go, that doesn't mean that you have to go at full speed every single time. That is actually, I don't know why, but there seems to be people that think that they are supposed to go super fast all the time. But yeah, don't be afraid to go slow. Most, I, I don't think any modern, I don't think, I don't think there's, I, I can't think of any machine that has no speed control, so... If your machine is too old to have speed control, you may um, want to consider updating your machine. <laughs> but anyway, 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 anyway. I'm just getting that out of there so I can finish. Da, 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 da. This is just the one I made earlier, by the way, if, if you're skipping ahead and wondering why I have a different one on the machine. There we go. And again, I don't have to backstitch because I just started at one end and came all the way around. Okay. By the way, if you're trying to trim your thread, if you're trying to trim your threads on black on black, just do that and then hold it over something white. That's one. That's that's probably my biggest problem. Okay, here's the one I just made. Here's the one I just made with blue on the outside. Oh, I'll come back for the rest of these threads later. Okay. Or maybe I'll just sit here and do them now. Do do do. Perfect. I'm very happy. Okay. So <clears throat> that is how you do one of these ones. Let me just get a measurement on. Let me get a couple measurements for you guys. I'll, I'll try and remember to put it in the description as well. Okay, so this reaches just past the 10 inch mark. So, and it reaches, okay, so you are going to need an 11, a minimum of an 11, two 11 by 4 pieces of fabric and an 11 by 4 minimum 11 by 4 piece of interfacing to make this work. Because don't forget, if I measure this, this comes up to just ever so slightly at the 10 and the quarter mark, but then it's not going to go properly here. Give yourself a little wiggle room for your materials and then yeah so and then one opened up cup sleeve from your favorite and that is if you're doing this exact one if you're if you're if your favorite coffee shop is a different place then you're going to have a different experience so yeah so i've got two of these i've got two of these they are beautiful they're going to work well we will see how they are for insulating they should insulate just well. They should insulate fine. You've got three layers of fabric now. Because um, these, these are only a certain thickness. So we'll see how these work. Give them a, we'll get, see how these work. Give them a field test. And if they don't work, I guess we'll be back with another video showing you how to make an even better one. But in the meantime, that is that. So there you have it. You have two... Let me guess, get this right. So there we have it. We have two sleeves. They are both fully reversible. Whoops, we're pretty dips. Um, I had a small issue on this one, but this one I made first and didn't have that issue. This one's that one. That one I didn't have to come back. Something just shifted. Probably because I was. Probably that this one was probably because I was too busy talking and not paying attention. But yeah, oh, that's got a little thread on it. I got it off. 
So, uh, so thanks for hanging out with me. These are done. We will test them out and see what we think. And we will go from there. I'm going to use mine like this. Like I said, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. Well, I don't want. I don't want to call it a mistake. It's an. It's a. It's an easily. It's an easily remedied mistake. It's a mistake I'm not going to care about because generally speaking, I would want that seam at the back where I wouldn't have to look at it anyway. So it's not a mistake anybody's going to notice. I'll tell you right now. Okay, this is not. This is not a mistake. I use black thread. This is not a mistake that anybody would ever notice or care about if I had used red thread and a coordinating red if I'd have done this on red on red like look at this look at what I could have, look at what I could have used I could have done it in this right if I'd have done it if I'd have done it red on red with red thread you would never have no nobody nobody would notice that keep that in mind when you're sewing sometimes small repairs Sometimes, sometimes the well, most of the time, the visibility of a small repair is going to depend very, very, very much on what color thread you're using. I use black so it can be seen, and because I'm just playing around still. Well, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to make another one or not, but I'm mostly playing around just to find out if I even like the design because I've never made one before. So, on this side, on this side, that black is beautiful. It, it didn't cause any problems. So anyway, anyway, these are done. I'm going to stop babbling. These are done. I'm going to go off and I'm going to edit this video and get this up for you guys. And then you guys can tell me what you think. And if you, if anybody wants to try one, if anybody wants to try one for themselves, let me know how yours goes. And this was the, this was the best, this was the best way to do it that I found. Um, because like I said, I started looking over all the video, I, I started looking through all the other videos that were out there and they were just all over the place for sizing. Nothing hor nothing horrible, but I just didn't want to screw around forever just trying to get my size right. So using this as a template really, really saved me a lot of time. Anyway, hope you guys had fun. I will be back soon with another video. And until then, you guys have a great day. Don't forget, like, subscribe, ring the bell, do all the things, because you know I'm trying to take over the world one subscription at a time, and I need your help. In the meantime, I'll let you guys go, and you guys have a great day. Bye.